Everyone loves bacon. I learned this one from my wife. She put them on those tray, which is the best to cook your bacon. For and then for an extra step to make it really special, you brush it with maple syrup or a bit of honey if you want. You do that on both sides. With on the other side the same way. And you put them for four and a half minutes in the microwave oven, depending how thick it is. And it is absolutely wonderful. Nice and crisp. Sweet, crisp bacon. Surprise your friend with a clever one minute recipe. I'm Jacques Pepin. This is fast food my way. Happy cooking. Production funding for this series has been brought to you by Cuisinart with the next generation of food processors. From bread dough to pizza to stir fries, we do the work to save you time. Cuisinart, the next generation. And by Scharfenberger, makers of fine artisan dark chocolates, recipes available at scharfenberger.com. And by Spectrum Organics, the purveyor of fine culinary oils and condiments, Spectrum, the taste of goodness. And by OXO Good Grips, makers of kitchen tools that make everyday living easier. I think as I get older, I love seafood more and more. And I buy a lot of seafood. I live on the shoreline of Connecticut, and I buy it from a little fisherwoman there, which uh, supply me with great oyster and mussel and clam. And today, we're going to do a pilaf of mussel picante to start. Then after an onion crusted sole, with an anchovy butter, which is really classic, and finally an apricot clafouti. The clafouti is always made with apricot or cherries in France. So I will start with the rice for the mussels. So a little bit of olive oil in there, a good tablespoon. You want about a uh, quarter of a cup or so of uh, chopped onion. Finely chopped onion. A little more, a little less. Here we are. And that you want to saute that in your, uh, in your olive oil. You can of course do it with butter. But I tend to use more fish as I'm getting older and also more olive oil for some reason. So, okay. You want that uh, onion to soften a little bit in the olive oil, then we add the rice. What you want to do is to stir it so that the rice is coated with the oil a little bit like this. That's it. Then you can put chicken stock. I'm putting water in this because uh, the mussels are pretty strong taste. Salt with that and pepper. This is it. So you want to bring that to a boil, about 17 minutes or so, your rice should be perfect. So this is your standard rice. And next, I think we are going to do the dessert, the clafouti, the apricot clafouti. So we have a can of apricot here with, in heavy syrup, so-called, and that's about half a cup of heavy syrup, and that's what I want. Sometime in those cans, uh, you have more apricot, they are smaller, they are bigger, it's a bit hard, but whatever there is, you take it. I have uh, about three tablespoons of butter here, melting. So to this, I'm going to put two tablespoons of sugar, a quarter of a cup of uh, flour. You want to mix this carefully so the flour doesn't lump. So it's a bit of a crepe batter, you know? Not exactly a crepe batter, but close to. Then I have three eggs in there. Always break your egg on something flat and then open it, rather on something uh, with an edge like that, which push the shell into the eggs and introduce bacteria. So three eggs. Mix it. So those are very fast 
dessert, I'm putting about a quarter of a cup of, uh, of um, sour cream in there. Here we are. Mix it. I have my butter here. Like half of it at least, you put in the batter and in the rest of it, you put your clafouti mixture. Okay, put that right on top of the stove. You want to start cooking it here and it for about a minute, minute and a half, and then you can arrange your apricot on top now. You know, when we do the cherries, of course, you put the cherries in the bottom and pour your apricot, pour your, your batter on top of it. So here I have about, I don't know, seven, eight of those. Here we are. One more. So this is going full blast now. I think my rice is boiling a lot too. So I want to lower that rice to very low. As low as it goes. And this is going to be ready basically to go into the oven. When you see it starting bubbling around a little bit, that's it. You can put it into the oven. About 400 degrees, that's going to take about 20 minutes. Here we are. That's it. Good. Our dessert is finished. Almost. The rice is cooking. I can see it here. And now then we can do the muscle which goes into the rice. And I have muscle here, about three pounds of muscle. You can see that sometimes there is the beard attached to it, so you want to pull up, pull that beard, you know. Uh, it used to be that muscle had a lot of sand into it. Now it's kind of rare because they are grown on wire, you know, so they don't touch the soil. You see the, your, your muscle opening like this, you can touch the inside a little bit, you know, to tickle it, and you see that make it close, so you know it's alive. Or here another one, you can bang it like this too, and you see it close right away. So it's not because it's open, you throw it out, it's still live, you know. So in there, I'm gonna put some onion too. Or I can put that first, doesn't matter. My pan is hot. And this is the secret ingredient here. I am putting about a cup, cup and a half of uh, Bloody Mary mix, very spicy, you know. And that's going to open those and give me all the flavoring that I need. In fact, I'm going to add even a little more of Tabasco because I like it really spicy here. And some onion. About half a cup that should be finished here. This is a sharp knife. It's a pleasure to cook with a sharp knife. Okay, let's see here. And we want to put a little bit of olive oil in there and maybe we'll even finish some at the end. The salt, will probably need some salt. It's a bit hard to know with the muscle, you know. But you see they have a beautiful color. I want to cover this. And this should happen as soon as it comes to a boil. I think it's practically cooked now. You can see that they are opening a bit, all of them, maybe another minute or so. So we're going to serve them in this. So I want to oil a little bit of those. Put a bit of oil here. I would have plenty here for one of those per person is more than enough. Other men course. In fact, when you want to do a first course, those are ideal, you know. Those are about half cup. The other one may be a bit big, so. Okay. Okay. Now, 
I think the muscle are thick enough. We want to drain them here. There we are. Those are really large muscles, beautiful actually inside. So for that particular recipe, we take the muscle, I mean, look at the side of those muscles inside, take them out, they're a bit warm now. You know, when I was, um, my clothing was in, uh, in Belgium, so in Belgium they eat a lot of muscles, so she showed me how to eat muscle this way. You're supposed to take one of those muscles and empty it, that this one here, and use that as a pincher. You know, and that's how you eat your muscle, you see? You grab them one out of to the other, out of this, with that. Those are particularly large muscles. Another thing that you should know with muscle also, sometimes when you do them in a salad, you may want to take the outside of the muscle here. You can see that part here. There is the mantle here on the outside. You grab it here, and that's it will come out as a string, you know, around. And some people think that this is a bit tough. I think it's fine. So now I have to clean all of those. Oh, I also have to reduce the juice here. So I'll put my pot back. And actually all that sauce, I want it to reduce while I'm cleaning up the muscle. So now let me see that uh, rice. You can see that all of the water has disappeared. In fact, the onion come to the top and I can move it, take even a little bit of the rice. It's about 18 minutes. Mm, that's cooked, that's cooked. Okay, well, this is reduced enough. I think I will emulsify a little bit of olive oil in there still. Bring it to a good boil. Give a bit of a onctuosity, you know, richness to the mixture. And that's it, I can shut it off. And now the pilaf. So what you do with the pilaf, you take about the value of uh, about half a cup of rice at the most around, and you want to press it, you want to press it to the side to create like a nest, you know. So you can prepare those ahead. If you have 10 guests, you prepare your plate. So how many of those shall I put in there? Probably five, six, eight. Those are quite large. I rarely see muscle as beautiful as those. And then I'll put more rice on top. And you want to press it to keep it into shape, you know, into place. And basically, you know, when I had a, a small restaurant, I would prepare that uh, eight or a dozen of those and have them ready to go. Have them ready to go. I'm gonna put this here to show you. This there. Put a bit of parsley on top, on the top. What you could do is really put your plate first on top of it, leave this, and basically you leave them this way to keep warm, you know, somewhere. So you don't disturb it. When you're ready to serve them, then you would want to remove this around and serve your, uh, your sauce. The sauce would be served all around. That's it. Maybe another muscle on top like this. A couple of little pieces of uh, of parsley here for decoration. And here we are, the pilaf of mussel picante. I think the apricot clafouti must be ready. I'm gonna take it out of the oven. Ah, beautiful. I can see it now. It's really hot, but you know, it slides in, uh, 
it's light in my pan, I could unmold it. I'm going to let it cool off a little bit, but already put a bit of a layer of sugar on top of it. Here we put a bit more sugar later on. And while it cool off a little bit, I'm going to do the main course, which is the sole, you know, the onion crusted sole with anchovy butter. We're going to saute that in a skillet like this. This and a little bit of uh, a little bit of butter. Okay. And the salt are here, and those are half a fillet that is half a fish that is the top, the top or the bottom of the fillet. You can see that this part is the part which is under the skin, and this part is the part which is touching the bone. With our beautiful white sole, called differently in different parts of the country. You know, in the East, we call that uh, usually, I mean, they are lemon sole, fluke, you know, uh, flounder, uh, and so forth. There is a whole bunch of them. And here you have petrole sole, we have another. One idea that I do here, I use French fried onion rings as a Other coating. It certainly make it quite fluffy and all that. And if your onion ring end up being too wet, sometimes they are wet, just put a couple of pieces of bread in it and that will make it drier. So what we'll do there is uh, we're doing what we call an anglaise, which is breaking an egg. I probably have enough with one egg for two people. And there I put salt, pepper, a little dash of oil in there. Sometimes we put a dash of vinegar even in there or a dash of water. And then I will beat that. You know what? I have done that also with, uh, with nuts like uh, hazelnut, you know, any of those nuts that you ground or mix with bread also, and it's very good. Okay, so this is cooking. I need another one of those. And now I'm ready to do the sole. Sometime, you even go through a third step, and the third step is drump it in flour, then in eggs, and sometime in bread crumb or the type of crumb that I have here today. So I'm going to put a little bit of uh, salt on top of it, at least on one side. Dip it in there. Clean it up of not too much. And bring that on top. Press it a little bit. I forget where I saw that. I know I saw that somewhere or something similar. I say that's a good idea. It really tastes good too. So here is my sole. One sole like that is of course for one person. You know. And a second one. You can even have that. You know, in restaurants you would want to have this breaded ahead, whether you use bread or or that special uh, coating that I'm putting on. Okay, here we are. Okay. Okay. That's it. This has to cook a couple of minutes on each side. And continue with the classic anchovy butter that we put on top, you know. Make sure that it go a bit fast here. Maybe I'll reduce it a bit. And the anchovies butter, I use it for chicken as well as for fish. It's a great mixture, which is done with garlic, anchovies, and butter. I do the same thing with different types of herb, you know, and often when I have it in the garden. And what I do in winter, I freeze it. I put those butter in a piece of uh, plastic wrap, like a little tube like this, and keep that in my freezer. 
And then when I do a steak, instead of doing a Hollandaise sauce or a, or a, you know, a sauce with tarragon, béarnaise, then all you do is to slice a piece of that butter still frozen, and it's great to... Uh, so let me turn this because I think... Yeah, it's ready. Wow, it goes very fast. That's good. So in there I have garlic. I'm going to put the anchovies filet with the, with actually the oil. And I have here with a can of anchovies a lot. And about a third of a cup. Uh, not even, what do I put about? Yes. Half a stick of butter, something like this. And I could put in there, actually, there it is, maybe a dash of white wine, and certainly a good dash of ground black pepper. So this is a very assertive type of uh, type of butter. So maybe a couple of tablespoons of wine here, and when I use wine. I will tend to taste it because you never know. I have friends in the kitchen, they're trying to sneak something in my wine, but I'm never sure. Ah, this one is fine. And here we go. And that type of small food processor, you know, is really a spice grinder and it uh, reduces the thing to really a total puree, you know. This is great for, certainly when I do black pepper corn, you know, and all that, that's what I use. You can use it on this side and you can bring the blade on this side. And it does a different type of a cut. One crush more and the other one chop more. And butter, as I say, is very, Assertive and it's classic, a sole colbert we call in France, where we have a sole which is fried and served with that butter. There we are. Nice butter. Maybe I put a little piece of, uh, I don't know, a couple of pieces of uh, chives in it. Give it a little bit of a distinction here. Now let me serve my salt. I would certainly put some lemon juice on top. And maybe a little bit, maybe a couple of drops of, uh, of the butter. Not much. This on the side. And maybe a little lump of the Colbert butter to melt on top of it, you know, and it will melt. You can put more in the dining room. Yeah. And this is it, the onion crusted sole with anchovy butter. We're ready to serve the clafouti. So you can see that the clafouti cool off. I mean, it's still, uh, it's still pretty warm, but uh, goes down a little bit, and it's fine that the way it should be, and here, it should come out of the pan. If not, you put it back on the stove a little bit, you know. Come on. Okay. And that, we serve that in a wedge. The clafouti is always served in a wedge. It's a very spongy, you know, type of... Uh, this is very delicate, actually, you know. The clafouti. This way, with maybe a little more, a little more sugar on top. On this one, too. And with that, a little glass of wine always helps to finish the meal. Remember that the food you share always tastes better than the food you eat alone. Happy cooking! 
visit our website at kqed.org slash morefastfoodmyway to learn more about Jacques Pepin. You can watch shows online, view extra clips of Jacques in the Kitchen, print selected recipes from the series, and meet some of the people behind the scenes. Call 1-800-937-5387 or log on to channel9store.com to order the book with over 100 recipes and color photographs for $32 plus shipping or to order the complete series of all 26 shows on DVD for $39.99 plus shipping. Production funding for this series has been brought to you by Cuisinart with the next generation of food processors. From bread dough to pizza to stir fries, we do the work to save you time. Cuisinart, the next generation. And by Scharfenberger, makers of fine artisan dark chocolates, recipes available at scharfenberger.com. And by Spectrum Organics, a purveyor of fine culinary oils and condiments, Spectrum, the taste of goodness. And by OXO Good Grips, makers of kitchen tools that make everyday living easier. A KQED television production.